still spinning. Okay, we are we are live. Paranormal straight talk. Where are we? I think I'm in a cemetery somewhere. I think we Maybe need a song. Where are you? Oh, there you are. We had a song years ago for it, but it was all like ACDC and Thunder and all these different sounds that were all, you know, trademarked. So. Right. Well, you can we use one of those. You just can't play it for more than 15 seconds, I think. Really? Yeah, I think we played it longer than that. Should you so just like, go back to the, the bell holes. And um, I'm. This is the first time we're all doing this through this one thing. I'm going to see if I can see it live on Facebook. Oh, yeah, I should go to Facebook. How that's even possible. I'm going to check, um, guys. I can do that because I can go to pages. That's right. Here well, we I was go. trying to see if it was on my thread, too. Let's see. So, South Jersey's research. Here we go. We're live. It is live. All right. Well, there, there's confidence now that it's actually working. So it should be up on South Jersey Ghost Research, it? should be up on my feed, and should be up on the store feed. And okay. I got green chat marks across, so let's just assume that's really happening. Do you um, see it? Why is yeah. there? Oh, wait a minute. You have like a. It's an echo, because I have to turn it off. No, it's not that. I'm talking about the text on the bottom of the screen. Who? No, I'm saying to Dave. It's automatically okay. putting. We have a Jeff like, Eastman here. Hi, everyone from North. Hey, Jeff, how you doing? We're going to have to get you uh, on the show as a guest. There you go. Huh? Hey, Barry. Hi, Pam. Hey, Pam. Um, Are you looking at the screen, Dave? It has like it in case you you're can't. You're really hear. choppy right now. I can't hear you, Pat. You're really breaking up. No, I hear you guys. So tell him what I'm saying, Amy. Okay, what are you saying? Like for blind people or deaf people, it has the words going on the bottom of the screen. Uh, uh, you can have the, you have the captions on in the settings. How do you I make, turn it off? I don't know. Right now, I have, I'm gonna have to change my earphone so I can hear you guys better. Oh, I see. It. You got okay. it. I thought it was just everything coming kind of through like that. Okay. All better. All right. So let's start. We got people listening. Why? Oh, no. So as you can see, Dave is taking care of the broadcast quality for Hi, us. Nancy. Nancy Donahue's on. How about now? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh, you sound good. All right. That sounds really Much good. Better. Much better. All right. All right. You sound really good. All right. So, what's tonight's topic? Since we don't have a guest, we're gonna we're just gonna run around the topic and see where that takes us. By the time Shouldn't the hour's like, up, we probably won't be on that topic anymore. But hey, that's what it's you? all about. Does anybody Spontaneity. know you? Who are you? Why don't you introduce yourself? Um, Our I have my right there. I have my name right under my. If you look yeah. down I? here, this is Pat. Well, oh, you just put Pat. You didn't put the rest of your name down. I didn't know it was going to be on the screen. Amy filled in everything properly. There was no form. There were no instructions issued. Just saying. Just saying. I can do default, too. Real bright. Do we have a preference of a color? You do like no, really like, like crazy. No, I like the way it was. No, no, I, no. It's gaudy. Looks like a hack. Purple's nice. I black. Yeah, there we go. Like a little fine. dark. There we go. How's that? Yeah, that's fine. Doing a bubble? No, small yeah, like that. I like the bubble. The minimal, the block like that. Is that good? No, I like the bubble. You like the bubble better? I do. All right, we'll go. We'll, hey, uh, we I'm here to please. Toby Testa says hi. Hi. Hi, Toby. So, I don't um, see anything. All I see is. Go oh, to your, you have to go to your comments. comments. There it is. There hi. All right, so the topic that was picked for tonight was, uh, but I, I have a ghost, now what? Is that how we phrased it? That's right. So basically, when you suddenly, you know, not as a paranormal investigator, I guess, as a, as a, a person who's a novice to this or a non-believer or anything like that, and um, they suddenly realize and 
are confronted with the fact that they probably have a ghost. So what should their next steps be? Um, oh, hi, Tom. Tom Laura is on the phone. Hey, Tom. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm just going to say hi to everybody. because I know. I'll Sorry. be sitting saying hi to everybody all night. I know. <laughs> and you see what I can do? I can bring Tom's comment up here, too. So when people have like questions, that. say it's like, look at all this fancy stuff I'm learning now. Um, okay. Um, so, Amy, go ahead. Tell us everything we need to know about what to do next once you know you have a ghost. I'm just going to turn my mic off and sit back. Now what? There you go. That's, That's it. it. Now, now what? what? Now what? Um, <laughs> I was just re, -re it's it came from an article off the Shadowlands that I wrote probably maybe like 15 years ago, if not longer. And I was just reading through it and telling them um, prior to us going live that some of the stuff I wasn't sure I really agreed with. But I think it's because um, I may be a little more jaded after all these years of doing the stuff that you, you only tend to think like an investigator. I think a lot of the times we look at stuff only through our glasses and don't um take a step back and remember what it was like the very first time you saw something or experienced something and how that felt and i i know that's one thing that we try to do as a group try to put ourselves in place of the clients and view things from their perspective on every case because each one's going to be different um because if you always are looking through things as an investigator um you're going to miss a lot because the more you do this, the more, like I said, jaded or more you're going to assume that certain things tie into other types of spirits. When one thing happens, this has to happen next. And that's not always how it goes. Well, I know the one thing that kind of caught me off guard recently, not in the last nine months, but a little bit further back than that, was how scary it is for people who live there. I mean, we're so used to it. We're, we're going places, we're following the sounds instead of running from the sounds. These people that live there don't know anything that we know and they are absolutely terrified. And I kind of forgot about that because people seem so aloof when you're there sometimes. In truth, they're terrified, but they don't want to look stupid while you're there. So they put on a brave face, but they're really scared. Not to go right into a shameless plug, but the class that I'm doing on Saturday, the one about it's called Demonology 102, but I think the name I don't I don't like it with that label. It's basically how to interview, how to use the questionnaire and how to interview people. And you just touched on exactly one of the th good things you can learn from it. When people are putting on that brave face and telling you they're just curious, or you know, I, I, I'm, you know, maybe it's one person in the house, but the other person isn't interested, the questions on the questionnaire cut through the BS and let you know that there's some fear or, you know, at least unsettling feelings there, and it's not all just bravado, and they're not afraid. Obviously, they wouldn't have called you if there wasn't some issue with it. Right. Um, we did have a question. Did we want to do a question? Yeah. Nancy um, Donahue asked, can a ghost follow you from house to house? That's another article in the Shadowlands. <laughs> <laughs> Title, can ghosts follow you? And you need to stop this now. I'm I know. shutting down the plugs. You got to stop this. Um, typically, the spirits are in a place for a reason. Every spirit, the reason we're, they're staying behind or in a location is unique to their situation. They make a personal decision that's unique to them, just like all decisions we make for our for ourselves. And um, say Stop right reading. there, I just lost track of what Stop I was saying. Read it. You can't I read know. while you're talking. I know. That's, I was trying to look that's at two different things at help. the same time, and I just got caught. <laughs> Um, basically, the decision is unique for them. So you would have to give them a better reason to move with you than the, re the reason they have to stay behind. Now, 
people who are sensitive to spirits, um, they'll notice stuff everywhere they go. And a lot of people will just assume that the stuff is um, following them when it's not. It's they're picking up on different spirits everywhere. Um, you have um, relatives. Relatives will check in wherever you are. And if a spirit is attached to an object and you bring the object with you, yeah, it's going to follow, but not because it's following it, because you're bringing it along with you. And they're the three I got. Any other things you can think of? Well, I mean, you know, I live behind a graveyard. So my house currently butts directly against uh, a graveyard. And we get things in this house periodically. Um, most of them don't stay. They just kind of move through. A couple of them had tried to stay and we kind of asked them to move along because they were bothering people and they were nice and they just left because we have nothing to offer them. But like, I don't expect they will follow me into my next home because they're here likely for the graveyard, not for my house or me. They just happen to be here and they're like, Hey, I wonder who's home. You know, let's go check it out. So I don't expect them to follow me. And I also don't expect that the spirits who were in the house I just left will be coming with me because I think they were there with the house when I got there. Um, so they have no interest in me personally. I think they have an interest in the house and the property and the way we're maintaining it and all that kind of thing. Um, for Nolan's question, um, a spirit feeding off someone's energy um, it still fits into the same uh, answer, kind of. The, the spirit has a reason why they're staying behind, why they're staying back into this house or this location for their own personal reason. You would have to give them a better reason than their decision not to move on and go to the light or wherever they're supposed to go. They're deciding to stay put in that location. You would have to give them a better reason to follow you to another location. So it doesn't really matter of the, the weaker, the stronger, something that spirits could feed off of. Um, when you're dealing with like human spirits, especially, they made a personal decision to be somewhere and they're going to usually just follow through with that unless like I said, relatives or a haunted object or something along those lines. Okay. Pat, do you, you guys concur with that? Yes. Yeah, for sure. Start, don't mind me. I'm like itchy. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it matters. If you have something negative, um, they may target a weaker person, but I don't think they'll, I mean, yeah, they would stay with a weaker person as long as that person is allowing them to manipulate them. But I don't think that's how normal spirits decide where to go. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, there's probably this is not like a, a you know a, a hard rule or written in stone. Right. Obviously, there's going to be some spirits that are going to break the rules and do what they want because again, it's, it's still a personal decision. Now, how about a doll that just shows up? Um, I guess it depends <laughs> on the raggedy. If it's a raggedy Ann doll, right, then I would now. just move. I would just abandon the house probably and yeah. never Don't go burn back. It. Don't now, get rid of it. Don't touch it. Just leave. Yeah, objects show up a lot. I mean, I, I've done a lot of the cases, a lot of cases over the years. Um, the most unique one that pops in my head every time I think of unknown objects appearing was uh, brass candlesticks that appeared with candles half burnt in the middle on a coffee table in the middle of the house in uh, New Hope, Pennsylvania. I thought that was really, really kind of specific. They you know? appeared out of thin air. Yeah. Like, they didn't own them. Just there one it's day. Two people that lived there. No one else had access to the house. Um, both of them agreed that they weren't like, you know, punking each other, <laughs> you know, so there was no games going on. And they even went and took them to an antique dealer, and you know they, they dated back into the 1800s. So it was... oh, look, at, I have a case now, which I mean, not to be specific about anything, but 
I have a case now where diamond rings are showing up out of nowhere. So is that once you accept them, is that some kind of a bond? You know, if you don't accept them, are you going to upset someone where they'll be offended? You know, what's the right move? But you know that, um, keep in mind that um, Stop spirits move objects all the time. And sometimes they move it where we don't know where it is. We can't find it. Right. So in this case, because um, now they're talking about hearing a uh, baby cries, is it possible that there's a spirit there that, that's now making itself known and the the hidden object that just was somewhere we couldn't find it yet now is is being presented out in the open. It's being returned to maybe where it was originally mm -hmm. when the when the spirit was there instead of being maybe like in the back corner of an attic, in the basement, in the wall. I mean, there could be anywhere. There's stuff that's um, I've never found again. Um, I've had a lot of clients over the years too that said that it's just weird stuff that disappeared like off a wall or off a table, stuff that wouldn't wouldn't be anywhere but right below it or right near it that never came back again. And you know, it's and it was this odd little thing. So if this doll was one of them for that family that lived there before, then now it's reappearing because the the spirit's manifesting now. I mean, they could they could both be tied in. And if it's just a doll, like if it's not like demonic or anything, you could just get rid of it. I mean, you could do whatever you want. You know, if it comes back, you might have a different problem. See, here's one. There's a problem. I just read that. <laughs> no, I think that's their explanation. <laughs> that could be, yeah. There is a, that is a plausible explanation. <laughs> that could happen a, to me for sure. And we had a couple uh, antique uh, collectors in the group over the years that specifically said whenever they would buy something new, especially something they were drawn to, they would put it out, they keep it out in their sheds out in the backyard. And um, they'd wait a month. And if nothing funky happened out of the shed, no objects moving or weird stuff, then they'd finally bring it in the house because they, they, they had a little testing period. But does that really keep them out of the house? No, I don't. I, I, I question. I mean, it sounds yeah. like a good idea, you yeah, know, but so. is it really going to do the trick? Yeah. Maybe Once you take possession of it and put it on your property, I mean, it might as well just be in your living room at that point. Well, suppose the spirit knows they're they're out in the shed. <laughs> they want to come in. Like, what, like what, what the hell? What am I doing out in the shed? Wait till I get in that house. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you that's know? The they weren't going to mess with anything originally, <laughs> but now you put them in the shed for 30 days and now they're pissed. Yeah, exactly. So, I'll show you who's in the shed. Next thing you know, you're locked out of the house. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, um, Jonathan's still following up with that about the, um, you know what, is it safe to move it out of the house? That That's tough only because we're just getting a couple sentences on what's actually happening in the whole environment. So there may be other stuff that you don't realize is all tied in together that we may be able to give you a better answer. So we're using that that's word that's safe. <laughs> so I don't know if I want to say it's safe or not because if we tell you one thing and then something happens, then you're, you know, cursing us out because we told you the wrong <laughs> thing to do. We can't, it's hard to make an educated guess, basically. Um, me personally, I might just try to move it out, like even put it in the car, keep it on the property, but take it out of the house just to see what happens. But if you notice anything spiking up, I would bring it back in and then I call somebody out, to, uh, you know, see what they can find out. Also, there's one. Yeah, what's your thoughts on sage? Sage, yes. White sage. About that, right? Yeah. White yeah sage. Now, wait. I'm gonna go on my soapbox no. now. I'm gonna go on my white sage soapbox because I have been enlightened, my friends. I have been directed to various websites that all seem to agree that because of the high number of people using white sage white sage is actually becoming scarce 
And it's not really for any real reason why anyone's using specifically white sage, except that's what they saw on the internet. And white sage is not necessarily the right sage to use, depending on the situation. It could be the worst thing you could do. So I'm going on my soapbox. Don't ever use white sage. If we save a plant from extinction, which some are claiming, so be it. One, one person at a time. There's many other options. Yeah, I know back before the internet, um, white sage was still the thing that people were using, I guess, because it was tied into a lot of ceremonies that when you, you know, bought a book, it was in there too. Unfortunately, just my experience, and I get Pat, you know, and Amy too, when we see white sage used in a house, if there's anything that's negative there, it really gets pissed off and it can make things a lot worse. So when people are doing smudging, typically they're trying to get rid of some problematic activity and they can actually have the opposite effect. So there is other alternatives. White sage is not the only sage and it's not the only herb that you can buy. Um, I know I, I have uh, sage and cedar, sage and lavender, sage and copal, and it's all desert sage. It's not white sage. You know, white sage has its time and place. And I think, you know, Pat, what you're saying, it, the amount of people using it because yeah. of the internet it's become is, a problem. You know, it can become a problem, definitely. But um, it's not the first thing I would reach for. I would go almost any other alternative other than that, simply because it's the risk of you upsetting something that you didn't even know was there while you're trying to get other energy to calm down. Yeah, it's not worth the risk, really, when you can just use so many other available things. Right. So sage, yes. White sage, never. And lavender sage is typically safe, but you also never know what's going to tick somebody off. See, I could do show and tell. But because of the green screen, I can't get to anything <laughs> beyond here. Because the, oh, all the same stuff is literally back here. here. <laughs> the, oh, that's the piano. Sorry. <laughs> Grand piano. Grand I know there's, piano. I mean, a lot of people go out and that's the thing they, they, they'll go with. The groups that go out and they're just going to do cleansings after cleansing after cleansing. Um, and some you, you're going to have good results, obviously. But it only takes one bad result to ruin someone's day and, life. you know, and, and, and their, life. their life. Right. So why, why mess with that? Like I said, there's so many other options that you could use. Unnecessary. Right. Uh, there's, what's Dave doing over there now? You see that one is going up Toby's. Do you see that one? So the usage in the old house. And that might be bad. It actually make it worse. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. how you use it too. The intent is important because um, it's all about positive energy. So sometimes people who are scared and terrified smudging are defeating the purpose of the positive energy because they're covering it with negative energy. Not intentionally, but they're so scared, not thinking that this is definitely going to work. They're just doing it because they're terrified and it's what they were told to do. That's why sometimes having people come out like us or other groups out in the, the area or the country or the world, actually, we're on Facebook, but it's worldwide. Um, they don't have a dog in the fight. They don't have, they don't, they're not biased one way or the other. So when they're going to come out and do a smudging or a cleansing or any of the stuff along the way there, they're doing it with the intent of helping. They're doing it with the positive intent. So um, I know there was another follow-up thing. <laughs> oh, hold on. Kenny I'm, Biddle said I know. So I was, yeah. was going to invite him. We're going to have to get him on as a guest, definitely. Yeah. yeah. He's, yep. I think he is on the list that we wanted to call yes. Definitely. Yes. He is. Um, could it have followed you? It could have, yes. But there are many other reasons why you might have activity that could seem similar to it. Like what we were talking about earlier about um, being sensitive to spirits or having an object that has something attached to it, um, relatives, 
anything along those lines. Yeah, like especially if you're sensitive, a lot of times spirits can tell and they'll try to see if they can contact you for whatever reason. So if you're sensitive, you're going to have likely activity in most of the houses unless there's one that just has no spirits around. You're in the middle of a cornfield, you know. So if there are any spirits around, they may just be trying to get your attention because they think you can see them, hear them, sense them, and they're just trying to say hi. You know, it can be that simple. Sometimes not that simple, but I, I would think from house to house, unless it's attached to an object that you're carrying, it's unlikely to be the same person or entity. So here's a good example. Um, of we opened all the doors, burned it in every room, saying a prayer in each room. Um, suppose this, depending on what prayer you said, if you're going around saying a Christian prayer, but the spirits there are Native American, then you didn't help your situation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, at the very it's least, funny. nothing happened, but you could make it worse. Right. Well, it's funny you say it because Janet up a couple was saying that um, about smudging that someone, there you go. <laughs> someone said they didn't want to smudge because it was against their Christian beliefs. And she wants to know the truth in that. Then don't go to church anymore because when the priest swings that smoky thing around, that's smudging. Well, it's I think, incense. so somebody brought this up to me too in the same conversation with the sage. And I think that people associate the word specific word smudge as Native American. Yeah. And so just change your terminology and say you're doing a house blessing. And when you're burning, sm you know, yeah. you're burning sage and other herbs, when you're in church and the frankincense and myrrh, they're plants too. Correct. They're just using the resin and the gum created from the plants. So it's, it's, the, it, it's the same exact thing. It's just you're burning one in a dry state. You're wanting another one in a resin state. It's exactly the same intent, putting that positive energy out there. Matter of fact, when we most of the time that we're going to do something, whether we don't always call it smudging or cleansing. We never the, use a smudging. The, yeah, the, words, the words don't matter as much. But we usually use um, like frankincense, myrrh, more of the, the resins. Copal. They can matter to the client, though. Yeah. Like, yeah, if you can. say, like, this person, they heard the word smudge, and suddenly it's not something they want. They don't think it'll help. Therefore, it will negate anything you do with it because they had something in their mind already that right. wasn't necessarily the case. So, so just, you have to watch yeah, how change, you say things. Yeah, change the word. But, yeah, you, you need to go in as neutral as possible because – um. Like that, that shouldn't alienate the people and they're getting caught up on a word when they actually are okay with what you're doing, just not what we are calling it. Right. So, I mean, we all have to be sensitized to that when you, words matter. When you're talking to clients, words matter. You have to choose them carefully because it takes one word and you alienate them. And then anything you do after that, they're not buying into 100%. So basically you're wasting your time because they're not believing everything you're saying or doing. And knowing their belief system ahead of time, because you want to make sure whatever you're doing is in line with their belief system so that they're going to go along with it and feel positive about it and buy into it. And that will only help the intention get out there. This way, when you leave, they believe it will continue continue to be uh, fulfilling and not just like, oh, those people do that, they leave and it goes with them. Like you want them to know it's staying here in the environment because it's in your belief system. Exactly. So yeah, I learned good. Okay. I know, it's I amazing. It. That's great. <laughs> so what would be the next thing that you would do? I mean, I'm, I'm going to scroll up here and try to read and not forget what I was going to say. Uh, let's well, the see. The first thing, you have to do everything you can to find natural explanations for the things going on in your environment. 
So if the lights are turning on and off and they work by remote, make sure none of your neighbors have that same light in their house because otherwise they could be turning your lights on and off and you wouldn't even know it. So are, are you looking at the same thing I'm looking at? No, I'm not looking at anything. I'm actually uh, looking at you looking at things. Oh, because I'm I was right. I, okay, that's down further. That's why I got confused. Yeah, uh, I'm not looking at anything. I was I'm just chattering uh, away. About setting boundaries or what we call setting boundaries, where you're you're just telling a spirit in a firm but calm voice that giving them directions on what's bothering you. Like um I had a spirit when I moved to South Philly that liked to unlock all the locks on the doors. So there was two locks on my inner door, and then my apartment building had an outer door with two more locks. So in the morning, to make it easier for me, it would unlock all the locks. I wasn't thrilled about moving to the city, so I was a little, little, you know, caught off guard that I'd wake up every morning and all my doors were open. So I basically said, hey, look, I'm not excited to be here and I'm a little nervous about living in the city, so can you not unlock the doors unless I'm coming in, basically? <laughs> not when I'm here or in the middle of the night or when I'm not home. Um, and it never happened again. You know, I, I didn't yell. I didn't scream. I didn't carry on. I was upset, you know, but being upset isn't going to help. Yelling at someone doesn't always get the response that you want, but explaining why it's a problem. So we tell clients to do that all the time. Say, hey, look, after 9 p.m. at night, please don't make any noise. We have to sleep. We have to get for work. You're waking the kids up. But all day when no one's here, have at it. Have a good time. Right. Much I noise you want. Assertive, you know? but not aggressive. Right. So you want to stand your ground. This is my house. And I'm telling you, this is what I need done. And expecting them to comply, but not yelling, screaming, cursing. It's completely inappropriate. Pretend they're a guest in your house. Would you treat a guest in your house like that? No. Exactly. So you just Treat them as you would a guest in your house. And going back to what you were saying before while I was still reading, Pat, um, having people come out to check stuff, just like we tell people to do that or did you call a contractor to check into yeah. stuff like that? That's something that they need to do before we assume anything's paranormal. Just like when right. people are experiencing stuff personally, did you, when was the last time you went to a doctor to get a, you know, a checkup? Make sure there's no me medical or physical reason why some of the stuff may be occurring. That, that's all the stuff that has to be eliminated before you can even look at the potential for it to be paranormal. I had one lady who was telling me her light was flickering on and off. And her husband says, oh, yeah, well, that, that the outlet's loose. It always does that. And he goes to the cord and shakes it and the light goes on and off. But the wife didn't even realize that. And... You know, you put one thing like that together with like sudden knee pain. Oh, you can make a whole story out of that. You know, suddenly you have a ghost and he's attacking you and he's trying to paralyze you and you don't know what to do. Like people jump to conclusions and make stories out of things that are non-existent or unrelated entirely. Yeah, that's, I, that's part of the problem. That's part of what being a paranormal investigator is about. You have to go through all the stuff, that the facts that you're being presented, hopefully by using a questionnaire and an interviewing process, and then going through over all the data you've got to figure out what's paranormal, what's not, and what's I don't know yet. And then that's where you start doing the detective work. Um, you can't be that true believer that just runs in What's that? No, nothing. Somebody's uh, on. My, my very good friend is on. Rhonda. Yeah. I know, right? Kenny? People jump I know. Put it up. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Rhonda. I Th love that's you. That's just it. I mean, it happens, but we need to not go in as a true believer and go in. It sounds crazy, but being skeptical, looking for answers for things we can answer so we we don't we start out with a list like this and by the time we get done we're down to here but now we know these are things that we haven't been able to explain yet it's a lot easier to do this 
than on this. And when, especially when a lot of this stuff, you're wasting your time on it can be naturally explained. So why not try to naturally explain it in the beginning? The mental health, paranormal. A lot of mental health patients have paranormal issues and it's not always only mental health. It can be both. And a lot of times it is both. So you can't rule out a paranormal case just because the person has a mental illness, including it, schizophrenia. This is the, one of the things I'm going to talk about on the, in the class at Saturday too, is this, but it, cause this is like a, this is a, 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 a topic that I take very seriously because what paranormal groups don't understand all the time is that we are taking someone's life in our hands, but not in the way that you think. They're calling us in as the experts, even though there are no experts in this field, but they're viewing us as the experts. So if we tell them or say one thing wrong or do anything to make them more frightened or more anxious, you don't know what someone's, if you don't understand what the their mental health is, you could be doing something very detrimental to somebody. Um, there was a case that we had that a woman was having activity and she called a group up and their psychic over the phone told her it was a demon. So the lady was terrified, obviously. So that psychic said, well, sorry, I don't help you with demons. So now the lady was stuck. So she called another local group and their psychic called their back and said, no, you don't have a demon. It's a gin. And um, I think it's going to kill you before the end of the weekend. But we don't deal with that kind of case. So now there's <laughs> Great. two people, obviously <laughs> idiots, but they don't know anything about this woman. Now, when we finally got called to reach out to her by another local group, we never heard back from her. We were unable to make contact. So did she just get tired of paranormal people? Did she just get up and move away? Or did she, you know, take a couple of Xanax and chase it down with some wine, hoping she'd sleep through the night and the stuff wouldn't bother her? You don't know what you don't know. And that's stuff that you need to find out. If you don't understand, um, Things like um, generalized anxiety disorder or bipolar disorder or schizophrenia, or at least have a basic understanding of them and how they work, then it, you shouldn't be really handling clients because you need to understand how those dynamics work and how they would fit into a paranormal case. Quite often, we find that Yes, the person is schizophrenic, but yes, they have paranormal activity. You know, sometimes spirits that are more negative find it easier to, you know, attack the weaker person. And someone who is, you know, very anxious with generalized anxiety disorder or very depressed or bipolar, or any of the things that makes the, the emotions erratic, they can be easier targets. So they might have an activity because of the mental illness or the mood disorders. See, that's all you have to do a little bit of research and understand that a little bit when you're, because when you're dealing with people in their houses, you can really screw somebody up um, at, or worse if you don't understand how that stuff works. So um, what- And with children I, involved too. Right. So I always I like to, um, I'm sorry, was there, was there more than that? Uh, okay, there we go. Yeah, you have to figure out where one starts and one stops. Where does the paranormal activity stop and where does the mental illness possibly start? Um, when you're dealing with that, you definitely want someone to get a evaluation, whether it's even just that they're a family doctor. You want some kind of, unless they're already in therapy, if they're in therapy or seeing a psychiatrist, that's great because then they can tell you what medications they're on. They can tell you a little bit more what their um, diagnosis is. Um, but when you're having to guess, or it's someone that's diagnosed and not taking their meds, that's something you don't get involved in.
because you can only make it worse. If, if there's mental illness that's being untreated or they're intentionally not taking their meds or not taking them properly, there's absolutely nothing you can do. And you could potentially make it a lot, lot worse. So that's, even though that might be a hard one to walk away from, you have to walk away. Because that would be, that's the only right thing to do. Because you don't know how far off the reservation they are. Because there's no guiding, there's no guidance from any, you know, mental health professionals or anything. So you would be guessing how well they are based on your expertise. And that's, you know, none of us are that kind of expert. Go ahead. I'll, I'll shut up now. No, it's going. <laughs> doing great. I don't know, Rhonda. Rhonda was talking about a stroke protocol or something that we did. And I just don't remember that, though. But uh, Rhonda, just for the record, she is my favorite psychic medium. And she she nails it. Many, many, many times. Maybe we should have her on then. Absolutely. She's yeah, so funny. She oh my God. I love her with all my heart. <laughs> but I don't know. She said something we used to, we did a something with us. What did she, what did you say? Hold on. Oh, I'm scrolling back. No, the stroke review we yeah. did. And I don't, for the life of me, remember what that was. But I don't doubt it because <clears throat> we've always tried to pick the cases apart to find out what's really going on, not just assume, oh, look, Rhonda wants in. See, she's cool. But uh, you can't just assume that it's paranormal without going through the motions and sending people to doctors and or psychiatrists. And a lot of times, <clears throat> if they're not willing, then there's a sign right there that you might have a problem. Um. Going back to Nolan's thing, because I just want—I was just actually looked that up to see what the ages were, and they say it's a—they don't like to diagnose of under twelve years old, but I think if there would still be underlying issues that they would be going to a therapist or a psychiatrist or a doctor for, Correct. and that can at least point you in the general direction of where what is happening. Now, when it's a child, obviously that's a whole other situation on top of a difficult situation. Um, that's one where every little question you ask, all your case notes, all your in-person or at least face-to-face -face interviews, all that stuff that you do prior to actually doing anything on the case is really, really important. There's many cases that, you know, we'll, we'll spend a lot of time before we go on to the step where it might be actually we're going to do something at the house, whether it's an investigation, a cleansing or whatever, because we've done the questionnaire, we've done an interview with them. Sometimes we've done the second interview with them. We need to get as much information as we possibly can so we can make the best. And basically it's a guess in the very beginning, an educated guess on how to proceed next in the case, because each one's going to be different. You're never you're going to have cases that seem similar, but they're not because they're different spirits, different locations, and different people being affected. So all three of those variables are different. So they may seem the same, but don't fall into the trap of treating it like that other case that seemed the same way, because then you could be making a mistake. So find out as much as you possibly can, and then keep asking questions. It might be on a third round of talking to the people, you suddenly get the light bulb going off, and you understand more of what's happening. And then you can really be helpful to the people. That one client that we had recently where the son was, um, I don't think it was anxiety. It was like another, oh, he was, he was um, um, autistic. Uh, autistic, and, right. Yeah. And he um, was saying that he would see things and the mother was saying things were like flying through the house. And we worked with them for a very long time and kept in contact. And what seemed to be the case, which, you know, whether what we thought was happening, suddenly they didn't call us anymore when we told them what we thought, but they hired us for our opinion. So, I mean, there's nothing else you can do, but it seemed that whenever the sun was around was, was when the things were flying around. 
and they were always coming from a direction where either he had been or he had been at a site and we weren't understanding where he was for that period of time. So after months, I mean, we worked with them for months, we had to come to the conclusion that, that the son was like throwing stuff around the house. So as soon as like the shoes were flying, then we say, okay, lock up the shoes so they can't get thrown. Then suddenly something else is being thrown, something else that he had access to. So no more shoes appearing, but suddenly other things are flying. And, you know, aim towards her or in her vicinity. And he was like 18 and autistic, which, I mean, 18 is a rebellious age. You know, usually you're past puberty by then. But for an autistic kid, I mean, they're just in the thick of it then. So you have to keep going that extra mile and look at many different options before jumping to conclusions. Because then when you tell them that's what you think, you have to be ready for the backlash because now you're talking about their kid. And nobody likes to hear anybody say anything bad about their kid, including me. Exactly. Yeah. I think some of Becca has, uh, I think some of the most difficult cases that I've ever had to uh, yeah. work on was um, ones where it was autistic children yeah. because it's, it's still like it, it's an, it's an unknown in some ways because there's no way to easily get from point A to point B. And well, especially uh, a weight, a dumbbell. I mean, that's, can you hear me guys? Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Sorry. <laughs> my phone is that my thing was acting up before, but meaning a dumbbell, you know, something really heavy. It's rare that it would go flying down the stairs. You know what I mean? Isn't that what you were saying, Dave? No, I'm totally lost no. at what you're talking about. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I heard something. I'm reading these things on the side. So I know, you're, you're distracted. being distracted I'm by the conversation. It. It yeah, is. I mean, some of the cases that we deal with, and we've had cases recently this year and last year that were um, children with autism. And it's, it's, I know, I know, I feel like I'm, I guess, I'm, feel like I'm walking on thin ice sometimes. Because you don't want to make a mistake, because it seems like the 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 everything that you're trying to avoid doing, any problems you're trying to avoid causing, everything seems to be amped up, and you're being overly cautious at times. So I, I don't know. It just I find it difficult, um, especially because the potential of like poltergeist activity, I guess is one thing um, they could be causing the activity, but it's not something maybe that they're going to be able to verbalize. Um, there was the possibility they're aware that they're causing the activity, but they don't know how to verbalize it or say it back or I, it, the, it just, it's very confusing for me <laughs> to dealing with that kind of a case. Yeah. Very rarely do I run out of things to say. <laughs> That's one of the stumpers. That's definitely a stumper. Yeah. I have to remember this. I have to bring it up when you start rambling. There you go. Yeah. Say, uh, <laughs> Amy, is this reminding you of a case? <laughs> yeah, well, it does. That's why I was laughing because I was just. This is exactly a. Yeah. That's that's exactly what I think was happening on a case. <laughs> But when the mother would go, she would find the child in in bed asleep. I'm like, how do you know they're asleep? You know, it was I, shoes I, plus, or something. Oh, that's right. I forgot the rest of it where he was like saying he was getting voices in his head and they were coming from so-and-so. And it turned out that person, that name is in a video game that he plays. And it happened like several times until we started catching on to that. And I'm like, wait a minute. Like, 
But then we brought it up to her. Um, uh, absolutely not. That, uh, that couldn't be it. You know, so at that point you say, well, this is our opinion. You know, I'm sorry. We, there's nothing we can do. Like, you know, that's, that's what we think is happening. Here we have someone commenting. We're all reading this. That's why we're quiet. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's a long one. Yeah, yeah, so that, I mean, that makes uh, sense. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. And it helps having a mom like you, I'm sure, who can talk to him about things, things that he's seeing, things that he's hearing, things that he's doing, and have a rational, normal discussion and not be in denial. Like, that's so important. Yeah. Let's see. Um, sorry, we're reading again. That's why we're quiet. <laughs> so people don't think our phones have fro are frozen up and stuff. It's like, why aren't they talking? Um, I'd like to say that doesn't happen, but unfortunately it does. Um, the, we, we're part of Sa Sanctuary Paranormal and South Jersey Goes Research are two teams that are intertwined. The Sanctuary paranormal part of it as the group that handles all the darker stuff. So do we encounter people that are intentionally letting spirits in? I, I call them installers. And we're going in to re resolve an issue and get rid of something. They go around trying to put stuff in. And unfortunately, there are people that do that on purpose. So um, sometimes it's so they can come back in and say, hey, we know how to get rid of it. Um, oh, but yeah. if if you ever have an inkling something's just not passing the smell test, find someone else. If you're yeah. not going to feel comfortable with them, and even clients with us, if we're doing everything we possibly can and then they say, hey, look, things aren't working out, that's fine. Then w you need to find someone that you connect with and because th that's the only way it's going to work. So if you ever feel like there's, hey, something's not right, Go with your instinct and just. What about the client well, who shall remain nameless, obviously, but who sought, the, went to the mall psychic? Oh, and yeah. the mall psychic came to her house, did a reading, um, said there were a couple of objects an that were, mm -hmm. right, that had an attachment. She said she was going to take those things with her and she stole them. And then she came back and installed the demon into the house. And this person is still afflicted to this day, as far as I'm aware. And we worked with her for years trying to help her. Um, but after the church was, was, the church was working with the Roman Catholic yeah. church worked her for years too. Yeah. And then we came in after that. Oh, she moved and then they wouldn't, they couldn't, the diocese wouldn't work with her anymore. Yeah, she moved 10 minutes out of jurisdiction exactly right um this is amy i'm putting this one up because this again sounds like she's read our case notes from the same I exact know, case really because this never happens amy <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, the the issue with stuff being thrown or moved and we thought he was messing with his mom some of the other stuff that was happening was exactly like this um we when we looked up some of the the entities he was referring to, they were all characters in the video games that he played. Yeah. So, I mean, it, so it, it does right there, Amy, that shows you there's at least another situation that's identical. It, it happens. Even, even though it sounds like sometimes it's far fetched. No, no. Well, cause he's autistic. So no, it, I, I understand that that's what they, you know, autistic, they're smart, very smart kids. And I know they repeat things. And so I, I was agreeing. I'm not going to, we can't get into it. <laughs> get into it live. We'll discuss it uh, later. Oh, I'm just giving you a hard time, Amy, because I think you just. I, that's right. Like, wow, what a coincidence. I get it. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Next. Dave, I want to know how you get to, I want to be able to put the uh, comments up like that. I think because I'm in the control room and I'm controlling the control right. room. I can 
I have to be looking at that to do it. I was trying to respond to Rhonda privately and I couldn't figure out how to do that. So now th there's a private yeah. chat, but I think yeah, the private chat is only, only for us. us. Right. Oh, is that who it is? Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> baby <laughs> answered me. Nah. <laughs> you guys are having your own conversation. <laughs> Well, I put something in the chat trying to read. I Rhonda got you. I see that. Amy answered me. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, there's a lot of people out there giving Man. the good groups the bad name. Mm -hmm. um, with the sanctuary cases that we deal with, sometimes we're not the first group that's been in there. We're going in after another group has made it horrifically worse. So now we have to kind of figure out what they did as well as what was originally going on. And then we're kind of winning back the person's confidence in people like us because, you know, they are, they just got screwed by one group. So, you know, they're giving us a second chance. Basically we're getting the second chance. So we're, we're trying to, you know, we're, we're re redeeming all the paranormal groups by going in and not messing up. Sometimes yeah. the people aren't that lucky. The second group they come in, they make things even, you know, worse. Or they just go in, they do their investigation, and then they run away. Well, the other thing too that I want to mention is just because a client is even demanding information and results, and they want to know what you know, and you know, what are you going to do? You take your time with that case. You don't get pushed around by clients into jumping to conclusions, making a wrong decision, making a bad recommendation, just because they're putting the pressure on and they're afraid. What you need to do instead is manage their fear and talk right. to them and let them understand by educating them what's happening and telling them it's going to take a while. To do it right, it takes a while and you have to trust us and don't let them bully you. Otherwise they can go somewhere else. Don't Because that'll be the one that tarnishes your reputation and starts plastering your name all over the internet. Yeah. Right. The lady had her go around taking pictures of portals and had her sage her home two times already. Uh, it depends on where she you can message us privately and uh, we can uh, find out where you're located and then if we know anybody in the area we can put you in touch with them that would be the, the best way to go about it um, yeah if they're taking pictures of portals and Video. telling you to go around and do it that just sounds like someone that just is pulling different things out of a hat I'm like oh next go around three times and you know backwards and uh, it doesn't sound like, or it's the same advice that that person tells every single person that calls them. Right. So. Especially if she's charging, that's bad. Yeah. There's a lot of people that do that too. Um, where <laughs> if, if Rondo you, appreciate that. Some, sometimes the person who's the psychic doesn't realize that they are like the goat in uh, Jurassic Park being like tied out waiting for the T-Rex to come. If you're going out and you're reading the location, so, so suppose the group doesn't have any idea what's going on. Because they, if they're doing stuff like that, they probably don't. So they haven't gone through an extensive questionnaire. They haven't gone through an extensive interview with the client. So they have no idea this could possibly be a really, really, really bad case. And then you're walking in wide open to read the location and see what you feel. That's basically you walking in and saying, come inside me. Here I am. That's how bad of a situation that could be. They could be caught. You could be signing up for a possession very quickly. Yeah. I know that's not your dog, babe. No, I have the doors closed and I have a fence. Let me say, um, my dog. Yeah, I know. It doesn't even sound like your your dogs are like. <laughs> let me see. Um, what page are you on? Um, Angel, are you on? 
Facebook, um, the, Facebook right? It has yeah, but Facebook I don't know which logo. which Facebook one it is. Oh. Uh, if so you're on the, the if you're on the store or the group, you can just message us directly from there. And if you're on my page, you can just message me privately on there too. Would it, just to send a pr private message. Any one of those locations, I'll see all three, and Pat will see the one going to <laughs> How SJGR. Did I get drawn into this. I thought you were going to say I'm going to. I could see all three, and I'll take care of it. Then my name coming in. <laughs> there was there was there was other groups out there that would use you wisely or or not abuse you. Yes. Uh, I mean, granted, there's a lot of groups that run around and they have their, that's their claim to fame, that they send their psychic out, their psychic says what's going on, and that's it. That's the story that they tell the client. But being someone who can see and feel and talk to spirits, if I go out to a house and I just read the house and I see there's a little boy in the house and um, that's all I pick up on, I go back and I tell them, okay, there's a little boy in the house, tell them my whole story they go tell the client well yeah there's a little boy in the house that's not the spirit that's manifesting and doing all the other stuff it's only all i saw the day i was there so it's not something that can always be just a standalone thing where someone does like a reading it's a combination of a whole bunch of other stuff including the getting the information from the clients maybe an investigation you know, a lot of different things before you can tell the client, this is what we think is going on here. Right. Angel, if you just go onto the store, um, if you just message us right from the store, I'll get the message. Oh, that's, that's, uh, Janet. <laughs> yeah. Jan Janet, that happens all the it. time. Yeah, hey Janet. Yeah, a lot of groups. That's all. I mean, mm -hmm. Pat, wasn't that like the first, uh, the first case that me and you really worked together on, the retirement community? Oh yeah, yeah. Remember the the real famous medium from north of us? Yeah, there was another one too where this particular person uh, posted pictures of themselves having an exorcism in a client's house. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And he, he was like ripping his clothes off. Yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. That's the one. <laughs> and then and then posting it up on, not only yeah. charging them, but then posting it up on YouTube too. Right. Not a violation of privacy at all. No, not at all. Um, here's where we get into that fuzzy zone again, that gray area. Without knowing more about the people in the house, all of this stuff that they're experiencing, um, the location, um, all that stuff. And I'm talking a lot of stuff, 54 questions, at least <laughs> yeah. one or two in face-to-face -face, um, interviews. It's hard to give any kind of advice on what to do in such a specific thing. Um, first of all, we'd have to, uh, there would have to be a reason why we'd assume there would be multiple entities. Um, so that would be one of the things I'd be looking for first. Is there something showing there's multiple entities or is it one spirit doing a lot of different things and manifesting different ways? So see, that's just one question right there that could change how we would advise you to deal with it completely differently. Dealing with one and dealing with multiple are, you know, two different things. So that would take a lot more information before we could really give out a place to start. So if you're if you want a place to start, questionnaire and interviewing yeah. and finding out as much background on what's happening, the location it's happening in, and everyone that lives in the house. What are they experiencing? What do they take think of the, the activity? Uh, take the demonology class that's coming up next weekend. Or is it next this Sunday? Maybe like, can Saturday. Saturday. I know. Sa I know. Really, she just like she's my <laughs> she's my hype person there. <laughs> I was thinking, but, Dave. There was a case that I was going to recommend something typically innocuous, like like lavender. Say, you know, just as an example. I don't remember what it was. It was a long time ago, and you said, "Well, what if the person that was there is?" Like they worked in lavender fields and they were a slave and they were shot 
picking at lavender and like they're going to go into a fury as soon as you light it and you're like you can't do anything until you get the questionnaire back interview the client review the case in full don't recommend anything at all see that stuck with me see sometimes training depending on what the group says is training and what training, what practical training is, like how to interview a client, how to, what to know, what to look for is more important than knowing how to do an investigation or how the equipment works. For sure. When you're, when you're dealing with people, that stuff is more important. So a lot of groups go backwards about it and they, they teach you all that stuff and they never go over all the other important things they need to know because primarily they don't know it themselves. You go, Amy. I'm listening. <laughs> I like you put that on the screen. It's unfortunately we see this all the time. There's so many people that they've watched a show or they've read a book or they follow, you know, message threads on Facebook or they follow someone on Instagram. And that makes them experts. And because now they can put up a real fancy Facebook page and have people contact them for help, um, no one ever asks, well, how much experience do you have? Have you ever even done this before? A lot of the public out there, it, they're so caught up in the activity and they're reaching out for help. They don't always do like, like a background check or even look into the people that are they're, con they're contacting and asking them to come out to their home. I'm thinking like that 10 year old kid, <laughs> the leader of the group. Oh yeah. Uh, the video. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. The that YouTube, one. right? Yeah, Mom and dad and a 10 year old kid. Yeah, no. And then the YouTube one was another one came up very recently where he posted the entire case, all the evidence, including videotapes of the investigation on YouTube without the client's permission. Ah, what's yeah, the worst thing that can happen, right? Yeah, well, if we're telling that house. So <laughs> if we're going to keep this an hour every other week, <laughs> are we going to? So we're at like uh, almost 10 yeah. after now. Yeah, we should cut. I got to make a phone call to a client. As All right. Know. Yeah. So, so I'm sure we, that should have, we, for me. we should have asked questions like, oh, let us know what would, you know, what they would like it. Well, we can because we're. We, I need to get the. We have a Facebook page for the show. I just don't have it all set up yet. But then we could put that out there and ask people, "Hey, what would you like to see?" Or yeah. you could share the logo or the thing for the next week, next show, and ask them along with that, "Hey, if there's yeah. any things in the future?" Or we could say, "Here, hey, if you guys got any ideas, just shoot us a message." Yeah. All yeah. right, everybody. Thank Can you for. Right. Uh, Thank you, everyone. Thank you, David. Hey. Bye. Thanks, Rhonda. Bye. Thanks, everybody else. Um, we're still reading yeah. Rhonda's message. Hang on. <laughs> it's like a novel. See, I told you she'd be perfect. She's chatty. There you go. A so girl. Set that up. There we go. Okay. We got Rhonda Thank now. You, Rhonda, you sold your way yeah. onto the show right off the bat. Yeah, I love her. All right. Take care, everybody. Good night. All right. Bye, All right. everybody. Good night, everybody. Thank you.